Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. Uh, ben Mankiewicz, uh, Alonzo Duralde, Jonathan Kim, the Greenhorn, Seth Rogen, Jay Chow, and then a pretty good uh, supporting cast, too. Jonathan, you're a bit of a uh, comic book geek. Uh, you can smile at that. Yeah. <laughs> Take that very seriously. Own it. <laughs> yeah, own own it. exactly. exactly. Uh, uh, set up the, the Green Hornet for us. The Green Hornet, which is based on the radio show that started in the 1930s, serialized in film, and then made into the 1960s TV show, which introduced the world to Bruce Lee and made him an international star. What now? Now being done in 3D to some mixed uh, mixed results. Yes. Today's top story is newspaper mogul James Reed was found dead, leaving his son in charge of his media empire. I'm sorry to hear about your father. Hey Kato, you knew my dad pretty well, right? Now that he's gone, I'm thinking I haven't done anything good my whole life. I'm not sure what I should do. Wanna see something cool? Whoa! You did that? We've been completely wasting our potential. The city needs our help. We could be heroes. In the uh, intro, uh, Jonathan, you talked about the uh, the 3D. I think we should get that uh, out of the way. Uh, I saw it in IMAX, kind of, uh, and, uh, and 3D. What did you think of the uh, 3D? Well, the, the thing that bothered me was that you can tell that the movie is beautifully shot. Let me interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> the 3D blue. No, uh-uh. I'm going to disagree with you on this one. And I'm not a 3D defender, generally right. speaking, but I think Michelle Gondry does some cool shit with it. Yeah. Uh, the whole, there's a, there's a sequence where there's... Did you hear me say that it blew? Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'm really not paying attention I'm to that having part? To, You're making me stand up for 3D, which is like <laughs> despicable, but right. here it goes. There's that, uh, it just, if only for that sequence where the screen splits into eight pieces and the, the pieces like go forwards and backwards and aren't on the same, you know, flat yeah. plane, I was like, wow, Michelle Gondry has done something new and, in, and interesting in 3D. And even just in the regular sort of actiony parts, I thought it was fine. I, I you know, I, I, with the exception of Avatar, I can't think of a movie where it's been indispensable. But, you know, compared to compared to Clash of the Titans and Alice in Wonderland, it looked great. I thought it was worse than Clash of the Titans. Clash Ooh. Of the Titans. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think it would have looked great in. I mean, I think he did do a lot of cool stuff. I think it would look great in two D. I, I, I think I guess I want to see it again <laughs> in, uh, in two D. Um, it just like I, I had every scene outdoors with sunlight seemed really distorted to me. Like were, I found myself doing a lot of this. There were some aerial shots where yeah. like they're flying over trees and you see this little like stuttering and skipping yeah. like amongst the trees. I, I really, I really. I mean, maybe I have crap eyesight. I didn't pick up on the yeah. details. I thought it looked fine. And and uh, just I mean, it, was I, not, it wasn't shot in three D. It, it was not. It was, it was post converted. Yeah. 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 But you know, I, I, as far as the of the post conversion movies that I've seen, so like not the cartoons and not you know stuff that's actually filmed in three D, I thought it looked pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was it was decent. I still find three D distracting in general. Yeah. But that just might be a personal thing. I don't think it's going to ruin many people's experience, except for yours. But. Yeah, I did. I thought the outside stuff looked. Uh, you know, some of the action sequences were all right, but like the funeral. Uh, for Tom mm. Wilkinson, I don't want to give any dies. Well, you mentioned you the train. Um, there is still sort of that cardboard <laughs> yeah. cutout feel when the movie is converted, where it just feels like a flat thing is in front as opposed yeah. to. Yeah, but a it was. There weren't thing. any moments like in Clash of the Titans where you know Liam Neeson's face is floating in front of his head, <laughs> and then his hair is on a whole other yeah. little plane. That was. There's no, I, nothing remotely that bad in this movie. I may have misspoken <laughs> <laughs> about saying it was worse than Clash of the Titans, but it was. There were moments. There were moments okay, when it fair, reminded fair me enough, of how bad enough. Clash of the Titans. Was. <laughs> Um, but uh, I don't know. They were just th th part of that bothered me. But now, separate from uh, from the quality of the film, let me just do a brief, separate from the review, a, a tiny rant. Permission? A uh, Jeremiah. Okay. Have, go for it. I, like I, I missed the screenings of this movie because I was playing softball, <laughs> like a good critic. And so I went uh, last night uh, with our uh, producer director Andrew um, to the twelve oh one screening on Friday night when it opened, um, Friday morning. And so I went to the IMAX screening, but it's not an IMAX screening, it's just a theater. 
They just say it's IMAX, but it doesn't. There's nothing different name, about name it. Name names. The AMC Theater. Yes. There's nothing IMAX y about it. No, in uh, Century so City. All the AMC IMAXs. I, I, okay, I'm not going to say all of them because maybe there's one that isn't. <coughs> but for the most part, all AMC IMAXs are mini IMAX. But they I mean they're just maxi theaters. There's yeah. nothing. There's like what is there? Four inches more? They're, they, Eight yeah, inches. They, they more? are not anywhere near like the old. Like if you went to the Science Museum or yeah. you go to City Walk or somewhere like that and see like an honest to god IMAX. So I see it. You see it in 3D, which I think blue, as we've <laughs> already established, and and then this fake IMAX. Yeah. It cost nineteen dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> nineteen fifty. Who pays twenty dollars for a freaking movie where the three D isn't good and the IMAX is just a lie? <laughs> it's just a flat out lie. Yeah, they. By, uh, by what does your friend say? Limax is my. my it's my friend calls it. And yeah, and that this is the new Hollywood paradigm. Like we can make these sort of not great movies make more money because you know a family of five now has to pay a hundred dollars to see you know Alpha and Omega or the Nutcracker in three D or some shite like that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a rook. It, and, I, and the IMAX on top is worse. It, has made, it is so outrageous. I've decided not to have a family. <laughs> so, look what it's done. Thanks, 3D. It's somewhat, yeah. it's somewhat of a drastic move, but not unjustifiable. <laughs> right. so, 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 I mean, I get it that that's uh, separate from the, the artistic endeavor, the artistic uh, quality of the film, which uh, yeah, you know, I, Michelle Gondry did not make uh, AMC put in the fake IMAX. No, screen, but so I let's mean, be very clear about but that. That's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah, that, no, that's, no. you can't be no. paying nineteen fifty for that. Uh, anyway, uh, I thought it was pr uh, pretty funny. I mean, and, and unexpectedly. Yeah, funny. It, it's a smart movie. I mean, it, it's it was written by Seth Rogen and Evan yeah. Goldberg, who did Superbad and Pineapple Express. And friends from from and childhood. from childhood, and it has that same kind of like bromancy, you know, like heterosexual panic undertone that those other movies have. Um, but it's also a superhero movie at the same time. So there's a lot of, it's, it, it, it's, it's operating on a lot of different levels. It goes to places that you aren't expecting, you know, the villain to be self-conscious and, and have an inferiority complex. You aren't expecting a superhero who doesn't really know what he's doing and who the sidekick is doing all the heavy lifting. You know, it, 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 it's, it's new and it's different and it's funny and, and it's really entertaining, I think. It has the same uh, sort of uh, dynamic, not dynamic, it has the same feel in the nature of the superhero as Iron Man. It's a very different kind of movie, mm -hmm. but I had the same sort of takeaway as a superhero. It felt like a grounded superhero, which sure. I like a lot more than, I like, you know, I liked Iron Man a lot more than Bat. It's a superhero that was identifiable. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that's great about this that we haven't seen in a superhero movie yet is that it's a guy, I mean, definitely of no abilities. We've seen that Iron Man is technically that because he's just a regular person, but also of like sub-average intelligence <laughs> and also <laughs> sub-average physical abilities, yet thinks that he's the hero. And uh, whereas Kato is actually practically a superhero. I mean, he's like Tony Stark, but doesn't have the money. Has to do it like with borrowed right. money, which I thought was really interesting. And then also the fact that we haven't yet seen a superhero movie that focuses on a duo. The, of two people, kind of, you mm. know, a crime-fighting duo becoming superheroes, and then trying to sort out who is the hero and who is the sidekick, <laughs> yeah. where one is, should, I mean, Seth Rogen <coughs> should clearly be the sidekick. He doesn't, he can't even drive the car. No, it's a little racist. But, Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the tyranny, well, he's tyranny he's, of he's Asians. playing an entitled, you know, millionaire totally. guy. So of course he's got to be. He thinks he's no. In I mean, it's, you know, but I, no, I, I totally yeah. get you. Um, um, yeah, in fact, I, I was reminded more than once actually of the 1970s cartoon Hong Kong Fui. No, sure. Uh, where <laughs> where the dog <laughs> thinks he's the hero, but it's actually the cat oh, who's nice. doing yeah. everything and making things work. Or you could say, you know, if you want to get snooty about it, it's like Jeeves and Wooster. Ah, I don't know what that means. we're going it, British. The PG Woodhouse, where oh, Bertie, right. Bertie Jeeves is this like rich dipshit, and Jeeves is the smart butler who gets him out of all of his scrapes. Uh, the phrase "rich dipshit" is <laughs> awesome. Which uh, Rogan is playing here too. Uh, yeah, together they're like Tony Stark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. You know, and it's. I, I love the fact that there's a love interest. Which in I realize is your point. I'm not stealing. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I love that there's a love interest in this movie who's not interested in either of the men. Like well, Cam was, Cameron yeah. Diaz could not be bothered with either yeah. of them. So really, it's, it's, like I said, it's a bromance. And we're not going to give away who it is. There's a really nice cameo in the beginning. Yep. D Okay, I don't Isn't remember, there? but... Yeah, see? <laughs> like, that's, how, that's how nice the cameo is in the beginning. Uh, oh, yes, that's okay, right, and, yes. And uh, Christoph Waltz is, you know, it's, uh, from Inglorious Bastards, is, uh, as you mentioned, the villain. It's, uh, uh, that gives it a little... And he's doing that substance. scary, funny thing that yeah. he did in Inglorious Bastards. He really knows how to ride that line of, you don't 
you fear the character, but you, he's, he's still funny. Like he, he, very he, appealing. He never dips over too far in either direction. Yeah. And I think in, in terms, I mean, I, I feel like I need to bring up the fact that there is an Asian co-star in a mega-budget American movie. True. At least was not lost on me. Like, yeah. you, all, you almost never see that. In, but what's interesting, I mean, the movie, it, it's a buddy movie. I mean, we were talking, mm -hmm. and so they, they share screen time. Yeah. Basically, and you kind of you kind of root for Cato in a lot of ways to sort of get the do get the do that he deserves. But also, yeah, I was actually when when before we knew that uh, Cameron Diaz wasn't interested in either of them, you're pulling for for Jay Chow to get Cameron right. Diaz. Right, and also another incredibly rare thing is to see an Asian man as a potential totally yeah. love interest. Yeah, lo love interest for a white woman even. Yeah, you know. I mean, in my life, I've seen I think I've seen three Asian guys kiss a non a non Asian woman in a movie. Right. In 30 plus right. years of watching movies. But when is there going to be a good looking white guy get an Asian woman? No, that never no one has. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's maybe, we're starving for that. Uh, maybe one day. <laughs> All right, let's get, some, uh, let's get some ratings, Jonathan. I think it's going to get good word of mouth amongst its key, its key audience and hopefully go uh, on to sequels. I gave it an 8.2. Wow, you really liked it. I did. Uh, yeah, I go solid 8 on this one. Uh, I, I, I love the performances. Jay Chow is a star. And uh, I, I want there to be sequels. I want to see what else they can do with these characters. Uh, despite the fact that it is a big budget movie dumped in January, it's a good movie. It's funny. It's subversive in a lot of ways as far as this sort yeah, of genre yeah. goes. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's smart. It's good. I liked it. So you gave it an 8? Is it's that right? Totally, yeah. Uh, you guys need to calm down. <laughs> um, but it was, it was engaging. And you know what? You're Because you, I'm weak of spirit and mind, <laughs> you, guys, you guys pulled me up a little. <laughs> <laughs> just during the conversation. Uh, so I'm pulling myself up to a six, which means I had to do a little uh, oh, quick nap okay. <laughs> while you guys were talking. So that uh, pulls the overall rating to a 7.4, I think. Uh, so it's a, it, it was a solid uh, What the Flick uh, recommendation uh, for the Green Hornets. So uh, go check it out. He's my man. I'm not your man. He's not my man. Not, we're, plato it's plato it's, we're just platonic friends. Yes.